you know, pack their bags and go home. So Nissan is struggling right now. They need to turn around the corner. Uh, they're really in bad shape as far as sales go. But I think, uh, you know, they're going to regroup and uh, they are going to kind of uh, re-strategize to take things forward in this market. We've got Taranshu who's asking, will the Vitara Brezza be getting a facelift? When is it going to launch? Well, the Brezza is going to be getting a petrol engine around the time of the Auto Expo, which is in February. And with that will be some cosmetic changes. So there's going to be no diesel uh, Brezza again. Again, this is one of the models that's going to be going out of the diesel car market. There'll be a 1.5 petrol Brezza only. Might get a diesel at a much later stage, but that'll be a year, a year and a half down the road. But for now, Brezza, the main change will be the engine from a diesel to a 1.5 petrol. Now, Shyam Zama is asking, will the new Volkswagen Polo come to India? Frankly, it will not because it's actually too expensive to bring these hatchbacks to India. The hatchback actually is a very tough product to launch in India because A, you have to price it very low. And to achieve that low price, you have to have high levels of localization. And for that, you need to have very, very high volumes committed. So it's a bit of a vicious uh, circle over there. That's why a lot of manufacturers are staying away from launching new hatchbacks. You've only got the traditional ones doing it, which is Hyundai, Tata, Maruti, uh, and uh, Renault, Nissan to some extent. But everyone else is actually staying away from that segment. And th there's no new Polo expected uh, in a hurry. Might come further down the road, but not nothing before 2022. Uh, uh, Jobin Verghese, uh, he wants, he's got a question on the Renault Triber and he's asking me, is it good to buy the Renault Triber now? Well, actually, this is one car that has amazed us with its packaging. We, I just cannot believe how they managed to squeeze uh, three rows of seating into that small footprint and it's really quite comfortable, very well priced, it's great value. Uh, it feels, uh, you know, a segment up than the price it suggests. The only downside uh, is the engine. It's not the smoothest of engines and uh, it could do with a little bit more pep fully loaded. But still, as an everyday car, it does the job. But there is a new engine coming, but you'll have to wait a lot for that almost a year, new turbo petrol. But if you want the, if you're keen on the Triber, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great buy even now. Pradeep is asking, when is the new Mahindra XUV 500 coming? Well, that's one of the SUVs we think will be coming by the end of 2020. That's what the plan is. So it's an all-new platform. It's a very significant car because this car will also form the base of an all-new Ford, what they call C SUV, on the same platform. So this product will be a combination of synergies between Mahindra and Ford. And I think that uh, combined know-how will probably make this one of the better products from Mahindra. So that's coming in end of 2020. Is it good to buy the Renault Capture diesel with a 3 lakh discount? I mean, a 3 lakh discount is a lot, very, very tempting. Uh, it's a good car. It's a very solid car. But the problem is when you buy a car that's got so little demand, the resale value really plummets. So just you have to be aware of that, that you'll get a good deal on it. But when it comes to time of resale, you won't get a good resale value at all. But as a product, it's a very solid product. Uh, it just doesn't have the wow factor of the current competition, which is uh, the Seltos, which is really the benchmark in that segment. And it's not as uh, plush even as the Creta. So a little basic on the interior. It looks good, very solid. In fact, I think the chassis is the most solid of the lot. So I think if you don't mind taking a bit of a hit on the resale, the capture at a 3 lakh discount is a good, is a good buy. <coughs> Philippos Korean is asking me what future do CNG cars have in BS6 scenario? Well, actually, the BS6 scenario uh, plays out to the, uh, for the uh, CNG cars. In fact, it's advantageous to them because in the absence of diesel, a lot of diesel cars going, that's where CNG could come in as a, let's say, uh, an alternative because CNG, again, <coughs> are very economical to run. The only thing about CNG is you definitely have a, a loss of power and the whole uh, you know, refueling infrastructure, the, uh, uh, that's just still not there and people just don't like queuing up for it. So I think that's still a lot of stigma around CNG, but in terms of economics, uh, it's very, very good. We've got <coughs> Saurabh Dambare who's asking, what about the Tata Nexon facelift? When is that coming? So we expect the uh, facelift to come soon after the Nexon EV. Now the Nexon EV kind of carries the facelift of the regular Nexon as well. Don't forget, it will have to come before October 2020 because that's when the cars have to meet a new pedestrian crash safety norm. So for that, the cars have to 
have new bonnets, uh, new bumpers, that sort of thing. And we expect it to come much earlier. So probably at the time of the Auto Expo or thereabouts, but definitely before October 2020. And I think it'll be a, a, a much, much before that. Aman Alam is asking me, is there any news on the Toyota Innova Krista BS6? When is it going to launch? Well, obviously, uh, Toyota are planning their BS6 engine. It's it's going to come with what they call SCR or AdBlue, which means you have the AdBlue tank. So fundamentally, an expensive solution for BS6, which a lot of 2-liter plus engines have to have or 1.5-liter plus engines have to have. So I think uh, we would expect this again in the run-up to uh, BS6, which is April. So there's no time frame, but I would am imagine that Toyota again clearing out all BS4 stocks right now. And Jan, Feb is the time I would expect the BS6 Innova Krista to be launched. There's also a facelift coming, but that's going to be coming much later in the year, not, not uh, along with the BS6 uh, upgrade. When will Volkswagen upgrade their India lineup? Now, this is the question a lot of people are asking, and Mo Mohit Maheshwari has specifically asked this question. So, Mohit, the answer is that uh, I think uh, they're doing it gradually. Next year, Volkswagen is going to be gone with their diesel lineup. They're going to be having a new petrol engine, which is a one-liter three-cylinder TSI engine, and it'll also be a MPI engine. So one is a turbo petrol, one is a naturally aspirated engine, and this engine will kind of cover their initial lineup, which will fundamentally be just the the Vento for now. So I think uh, they're going to have a, a very, uh, uh, they, of course, they will have their bigger cars, they will have the, the Tiguan as well, that's also going to continue. And they're looking at getting cars like the Tiguan all space, and they're even going to be looking at getting the T-Cross. So I think uh, there, there is a couple of models coming from Volkswagen, some of them very niche, but their mainstay is going to be the Vento, which will get a bit of a facelift and new engines uh, going forward. And of course, don't forget, there's the Polo. That's, of course, uh, the bread and butter for Volkswagen. That also will be getting the new engines, which is the 1-liter TSI and the MPI engine. But no major facelift to them. Basically, they will be getting an engine upgrade. And the newer models will be coming out in 20 and 2021 or so, and we will be seeing their first SUV uh, at the Auto Expo, what it's going to look like. So that's going to be in the Creta segment. Lots of questions coming in. So we've got uh, uh, Darshit was asking, will Toyota bring a race type SUV to India in 2020? Well, 2020 is too soon for a vehicle like this. Fundamentally, what Toyota is looking at jointly with Maruti is a Creta fighter or now a Seltos fighter, which is really the king of that segment. That really is the sweet spot. And we've seen with the success of the Creta that a 4.2 to 4.3 meter uh, SUV is really in the sweet spot. So that's where it is. We uh, Jaspreet Singh is asking, is there any upgrade, update on when the Jeep Renegade is coming to India? Well, you know, we were expecting the Jeep Renegade or a vehicle like that, which is sub four meters, but I think that's been put on the back burner right now. The economics of making it are very challenging, very difficult. Uh, there's no business case for it as yet, though. Uh, FCA or Fiat Chrysler are working hard on making one, but in, in the interim, there's going to be an upgrade on the Compass and there's going to be a seven-seater Compass coming before that. But uh, no Renegade on the horizon for now, though plans, they are working on plans to do that. Will the Tata Hexa come with the BS6 option? Well, uh, you know, this is a very interesting question. We've gone on record to say that because we've heard from... Uh, you know, a lot of the engineers and people who work on the Hexa that the 2.2 won't be upgraded to uh, BS6 uh, at least by April 2020s. Some of Tata Motors uh, management has gone on record to say that the Hexa will continue. Frankly, we have our doubts because uh, to get something ready by April 2020 is unlikely. I doubt that uh, we will see a Hexa coming out by, uh, by April 2020 where there will be a BS6 version. I think the best case situation could be that we might see a BS6 version further down. But I think I'm almost sure that by April, it'll be very difficult to have a BS6 uh, 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 Hexa uh, on sale. Tarun Pal is asking, uh, will the Brezza petrol be priced lower than the diesel counterpart? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I think it'll be substantially priced lower than the diesel counterpart. And Maruti, in fact, they've gone on record saying that 
it will replace the diesel volume one to one with petrol. I think the only way they can do that to offset the um, slightly higher running cost of the petrol car is by pricing it very low. So I think it definitely will be priced quite low. Uh, Ranmeet Sandhu is saying, will Mitsubishi bring any new products to India? I think Mitsubishi is gone from this market for a while. In any case, uh, uh, going forward into BS6, none of their vehicles are likely to be upgraded. So we will see Mitsubishi not present in this market in the short term. Of course, now it's part of the Renault-Nissan alliance, so I'm sure there are plans to try and bring it back, but uh, nothing, nothing immediately. Siddhant Harichandan is asking uh, an interesting question. He's saying, I am planning to buy a car around April budget of 16 lakhs. I'm counting on the Kia Seltos. Should I consider any other options? Well, uh, it's interesting because everyone's asking about the Kia Seltos. I think it's really, uh, uh, let's say, the flavor of the month or the star of the month. The only thing is that the prices of the Kia Seltos are going to go up in January. And uh, chances are if you book one, you're not going to get one now because of the long waiting list. So you will be having to pay a higher price. So suggestion is uh, you could wait till Jan. Uh, see what uh, if there's, they're going to be offering a few more upgrades or a little bit of enhancement to the model. Typically, manufacturers do that for the new model uh, year. They add a little bit of this and that to kind of just justify a higher price. So I would say wait till Jan, but uh, I think Seltos definitely a car you should look at. It's definitely the best in the segment. Aditya V saying, would you recommend buying a Tata Nexon diesel right now or should I wait for the Altos diesel? I think uh, the Nexon diesel with the higher power it has and the way it sits on our roads, it's a car that is uh, a proven car. I think the Nexon diesel is one of the better buys and I think I would get that and try and get that now before it goes to BS6 because you should probably get a good deal on it. Gupta uh, Bhuma Gupta is asking me about the S-Cross petrol version and any chance of that launching. Yes, uh, the uh, S-Cross is coming with a petrol option, the same 1.5 as the Brezza. So that also is coming. In fact, Maruti is replacing its diesels with this petrol lineup and maybe in the future it will bring diesel back. But in the interim, petrol is going to be the mainstay for most of these models. Udhaya Chandra is asking, is there any word on a new ambassador? Absolutely not. Uh, I think Peugeot has bought the rights of the name, but uh, I don't think they've got any plans to use that. So I don't see that happening in a, in a hurry. Jenika Kumavat, uh, is there any hope for Tesla coming to India? Frankly, I don't see any chance of it coming because uh, it's too expensive, actually. In fact, electric cars in India... It's, to be honest, uh, a lot of hype. Uh, they look great in presentations, very popular on social media, but uh, in the showrooms, very, very few takers. And I think Tesla has realized that, and they've also realized that you need a base charging infrastructure over here. And Tesla have this system called superchargers, which are really, really high-powered chargers, which, frankly, our electrical grid can't take. So we just don't have the infrastructure to support what Tesla would like in terms of a charging infrastructure. I think that's one of the main reasons why Tesla is staying away from India at the moment. Ankit Agarwal, should I buy the current BS4 or wait for the Brezza petrol BS6? Now, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting. I think I would say it all depends on your running. If your running is uh, not much, I would say wait for the Brezza petrol BS6. That will be quite a nice engine. The BS4 diesel is really now an old antiquated 1.3 diesel, Fiat diesel, which is really on its way out and really outdated. So I wouldn't pick that up right now. I would wait for the Brezza petrol. Vipul Kumar Virani is asking me, is there any chance of Chevrolet making an India comeback anytime soon? Short answer is absolutely no. In fact, uh, GM has made a case study that leaving India is not such a bad thing. They really haven't lost out and it's actually made other OEMs, other international global players think along the same time. So <clears throat> no one has done that as yet. So I don't think General Motors is going to be uh, bringing Chevrolet back to India in uh, at all. Uh, Abhishek Chandal is asking, will Volkswagen bring the uh, T-Cross to India? Yes, it is coming to India. In fact, uh, it's going to be shown at the Auto Expo. That's one of the cars it's bringing in. Uh, it's, and, and with the Tiguan Allspace, it's bringing that as an import under a new rule 
uh, where 2,500 units are allowed to be brought in homologation free. So it's very easy to bring these cars in. They don't have to go through all that validation. Very small numbers, but yes, uh, Volkswagen is bringing these cars in. What will be the approximate price of the Tata Gravitas? Now, it's uh, hard to say because uh, you've got uh, certain things like it's, a, it's an extra row of seats and it's got a more powerful engine and it's a BS6 engine and there will be a few more features. So all that will add up to a higher price. So difficult to say, but my guess would be around one and a half, two lakhs more is something that uh, you know one could look at in terms of uh, uh, price over the current Harrier. <coughs> so, uh, but... Uh, that's just a guess and you know Tata is known to surprise uh, the market with its pricing so we'll have to just wait and watch when it's finally launched. Any new car coming from Ford in 2020? 2020 is going to be a bit of a quiet year for Ford. They are just uh, consolidating uh, their product portfolio. They've got uh, synergies now with Mahindra. Joint venture has been uh, announced. So I think they will be streamlining their product strategy of sharing platforms, sharing powertrains, sharing mechanicals, all that sort of thing. And I think 2020 is going to be uh, a bit of a gap year for Ford. Philip Epen um, asking a, a question a lot of people have asked about a very popular sedan and that's the Skoda Octavia. And will it be launched in 2020? And any idea which engines and transmissions are coming? So. I think it is coming in 2020, but not uh, not very soon. It will probably be the end of 2020 and the current Octavia is on its way out. So again, there will be a bit of a gap before the new one comes. And the engines are going to be uh, possibly a 2-litre TSI, a more powerful version. And we'll be getting the uh, RS version again, which we'd announce on our website. So two, two exciting engines, no diesel for the moment. Diesel will be exiting. In fact, Volkswagen, the whole group, is not going to be having any diesel post uh, April 2020 for a while, at least uh, for the rest of the year. And uh, Skoda is no exception with the Octavia. So uh, again, it'll be a DSG automatic, no plan for a manual. <laughs> Mahesh uh, Jagtap, what would be, uh, is asking me what would be the estimated price of the new Hyundai Creta and when will it be launched? <laughs> well, we know when it's going to be launched, it's going to be around April 2020. And the price, hard to say, but one can say it's going to go straight for the Seltos's jugular. Might even undercut that, but it's going to be in that region. So, you know what the Seltos pricing is. You know the number of variants they have. So, you can just uh, expect them to be pegged head on with that. <coughs> will the new Hyundai i20 get a DCT? Yes, it will get a DCT. It will get the same DCT that there is in the Hyundai venue and that will be mated to a one liter turbo petrol. So that's a lovely combination. We've driven it in the venue, very exciting car to drive and in a hatchback, probably it'll be a, a more exciting and even sportier. We've got uh, uh, Soumya Gupta asking me, uh, will a Honda WRV be updated to BS6 norms? Well, Honda's 1.5 diesel is going to be updated to BS6. So one can assume that all the current diesel engine, uh, diesel models will benefit from that upgrade. So across the board, we expect Honda diesels to uh, uh, meet BS6 norms. What will be the highlights of the Auto Expo 2020? So uh, is Anway Joshi asking me? Well, uh, Anway, uh, I think, uh, to be honest, Auto Expo isn't as, as exciting as the previous years. A lot of manufacturers had opted out. But having said that, there are going to be quite a few uh, interesting new models, I think. The Volkswagen Group, for one, they are kind of going to showcase what they call India 2.0, which is a strategy led by Skoda. And the heart of that are two mid-size SUVs from Volkswagen and Skoda, which will be on display there. So that's going to be big. I think MG is going to be there in, in, in huge force. Uh, MG has been very, very successful in India. So I think their models, uh, you'll be able to uh, see what th their future lineup is going to be. Uh, you've got uh, Kia, which will show the Carnival, that's going to be coming there. You've got Tata, which will show the Gravitas. So hard to pick one specific model, but there will be a lot from a lot of manufacturers there. So definitely worth a visit, even though the participation isn't as good as previous years. I think Auto Expo is one event uh, no one should miss. Matthew Joseph is, is, wants to know if the Kia Stinger is going to launch in India. Well, Kia did evaluate launching the Stinger, but frankly, Looking at the economics of it, you'd have to import the car for the small volumes. It would be upwards of 40, 50 lakhs. And I don't think 
anyone's going to pay that much for uh, something with a Kia badge, even though it's been quite successful with the Seltos. More than anything, it's a bit of a distraction for the company right now, which has got its hands full with the Seltos, just churning out as many of them they can as fast as they can. So I think it would be a bit of a distraction. Maybe later on, after a couple of years, they could relook at uh, this part of uh, their product portfolio to bring to India. The Nexon EV launch, uh, when is it expected? Well, uh, we're going to be seeing it uh, uh, next week. So we are all looking forward to that. And probably a market launch one can expect uh, sometime uh, early in the new year. So I think, yes, as we said earlier, the Nexon EV is one of is a very significant car because it's from a mass manufacturer. And it will probably come at a price uh, which is the, the most affordable. Look, EVs are not affordable. We still don't expect the Nexon EV to be cheaper than 15 lakhs, which is quite a lot, but you know, batteries are really expensive still. So, uh, but still, having said that, uh, from uh, the, uh, let's say, the more advanced EVs, uh, this one is one of the most affordable. Of course, you've got the other ones which they have, the Tigor, and you've got the Mahindra models as well, the e Verito. but quite frankly, those vehicles are very limited. Products like the uh, Nexon, which run on a different 300 volt architecture and above, that's really what a proper mainstream EV is should be. And I think the next one is going to be the first of those in from a mass manufacturer. When will the Toyota badge Vitara Brezza be launched? That's probably expected again sometime next year. Uh, uh, Toyota have announced that they will be rebadging a lot of the Maruti models. In fact, we know that the Etios and Cross and Leva lineup are all going sub 10 lakhs and around that range is all going to be uh, Suzuki models badge with uh, to, uh, badge Toyotas. So uh, Brezza is going to be one of them and we expect that sometime in 2020. Quite frankly, we're not too sure of the time frame. And uh, whew, a lot of questions and uh, I just got time for one more question because we are really, really running out of time and that is uh, Gail Parth who is, uh, wants to know Innova Krista versus Kia Carnival, which one should we go for? Well, I think uh, uh, slightly two different vehicles, though both are MPVs, uh, the Kia Carnival will have a lot more to offer, it will be plusher, it will be more refined, uh, uh, it will be more luxurious. Uh, and it will be more expensive as well. The Innova really is a workhorse uh, vehicle that uh, just, just runs on and on. It's absolutely bulletproof. So something that's great for long distances, uh, great for using, uh, you know, over a, a long period of time. I mean, five, ten years, nothing goes wrong with it. So if you want something absolutely reliable, durable, and you want something that gives you fantastic peace of mind, the Krista is the one. But having said that, I think the Carnival uh, will be very tempting. It will appeal to the heart a lot more. It will have that little bit more of luxury, a little bit more of refinement, a little bit more of uh, premiumness. So I think um, uh, that's the last question for, uh, which we're going to take. Uh, fantastic response from all, all of you all. Clearly, there's a lot of interest. Uh, there's a lot of interest in, in, in new cars, a lot of buying interest from all of you all. I think that's a great, it's, it kind of bodes well for a market that's really hit the rock bottom in 2019. And hopefully 2020 will be a better year. And hopefully 2020, you will get to have a great set of wheels and a lot of new models uh, that are coming into the market, uh, new technologies, BS6, uh, you know, everything from all the segments which I had uh, spoken about. So, yeah, here's to a rocking 2020 to all of you all.